Welcome to Plan Oari. This is a video on one of the medical emergencies that is asthma where we'll be discussing it in length. If you like Plan Oari, please give us a like, subscribe to us and contact us through our website, phone number or mail ID given below. You can also join our FB or WhatsApp group. So let's get started as to what are we going to study in this particular video. We are going to study the medical scenario of asthma, how it can be asked to you in different types of situations or different types of manners, what is the management of an asthmatic attack on the dental chair, what medication is used and what is the dosage, how to demonstrate the administration of the drug, the advantages and disadvantages of the drug, high risk patients to an asthma on your dental chair, and many more questions which are unseen or the least probable to come. The top ones are the most probable to come in the medical emergency examination. However, we'll be discussing the most common as well as the least ones in this video. If you haven't seen the introductory video on the medical emergency as to what it is, please have a look as to the introductory video of ME where we discuss how the exam is conducted and marked. So let's go ahead with the asthmatic attack. So as you know that when you enter, there are two medical examiners sitting at a table full of medical drugs. You greet them and they start with the scenario. The scenario is something like this. They will tell you that it's a 35 year old patient with known asthma and is having an amalgam restoration replaced in your surgery. Your nurse notices that the patient is becoming increasingly restless. He coughs and wheezes slightly and you notice that he is finding it difficult to breathe. What is your diagnosis? So there are four things which you should pay attention to while they are reading the medical scenario. The age, so it's an adult. He has a medical history of asthma. You are doing an amalgam restoration at that point of time. And he is facing difficulty to breathe. He is coughing, wheezing slightly and is restless. So depending upon his medical history and his clinical features, it's easy to diagnose that it is an asthmatic attack. You need the age so that you can tell the proper dose of medication which you will be administering later. And you need to know what your, he, you are doing at that point of time because that too is important when you are answering to your examiner. And I will let you know how. So before we go there, these are the two different scenarios in which again the same asthmatic attack can be asked. If you pay attention, the ones marked in yellow are the things you should look out for when the examiner is reading the question out. So as you see, he is a 24 year old adult. He has a medical history of asthma. He is sitting in the waiting room and he has the same symptoms as earlier. Now here your patient is 8 years old so he is a child and you need to administer the drug according to that. He does not have any medical history and he is seated on your dental chair. You are not doing anything at that point of time. And he is again show showing the same features as before. So in both the cases, your answer will be that it is an acute asthmatic attack. However, the further questions will differ depending upon the age and what you are doing at that point of time. Let me explain to you a bit more. So when you are asked, you say that he is beginning to suffer an acute asthmatic 
attack or you think he is suffering from an acute asthmatic attack and both is correct. The next question they probably will ask is what do you think are the clinical signs of an acute severe asthmatic attack? Now whatever has been underlined in this video is something that you need to learn by heart. However, keep and understand the concept. So it's an asthmatic attack. So he is going to have difficulty in breathing. That's because his respiratory rate is increased and his heart rate is increased as well. Need to remember the numbers. Respiratory rate increases more than 25 minutes and tachycardia is heartbeat increases more than 110 per minute. There is a third clinical important sign is that he will not be able to finish a sentence while he is talking in one breath. So learn them. Next, how will you manage this patient is a very core question of a medical emergency viva. So at this point of time, what is important is what you were doing at that point when the patient started suffering the asthmatic attack. If you were giving an amalgam restoration, you would say, I will stop doing the treatment. If you were doing a dental, any kind of dental treatment, you will say, I will stop doing the treatment. If you were not doing anything, you would not mention this statement. So be very careful of what you start by saying, because this will give an idea to the examiner as to were you listening to the question or not. After that, you will say you will check A, B, C, D, E. And once I have diagnosed it as an acute asthmatic attack, I will. For every medical scenario, you need to mention these two things. That is that you will stop whatever you are doing or you won't if the patient is just seated and you are just talking to him. You will check A, B, C, D, E. And once I have diagnosed it as an acute asthmatic attack. However, the... ABCD cannot be checked when a patient is suffering from an, an, uh, from an epileptic attack because it's really very difficult to do that. So you will not say it in an epilepsy medical emergency. However, we will discuss more when we discuss epilepsy. You will say I will remain calm and reassure the patient to reduce his anxiety. This is very important because this you are actually calming the patient. You will sit the patient up in a comfortable position that's your first part so in the first part you stop the treatment check a b c d e you remain calm and you place the patient in a comfortable position the second is the administration of the drug so you will first ask the patient that if he has an inhaler to use it by himself if he doesn't have an inhaler you will tell the examiner that I will get a salbutamol inhaler from the emergency drug kit. For every medication, this line is important. I'll check the name, dose, batch number and expiry date of the medication. And then I will attach the inhaler to a large volume spacer device and give up to 10 puffs. So in the second part, you are administrating the drug. You are telling the examiner the name of the drug, the dose you are going to give to the patient. You are going to check the name, dose, batch number and the expiry date. And in a very brief sentence, you are just going to say how you will give it. You don't need to explain the entire administration of the salbutamol inhaler unless they ask you to. And the third part is again common to all medical emergency scenarios except a few. You will continuously monitor vital signs. You will give oxygen 15 liters per minute. And again, you will continuously monitor the patient. So in the last part, you are just monitoring whether your drug is acting or not and giving oxygen again with a proper dose. So as you see, your management is divided into three parts. Stopping the treatment, remaining calm and putting the patient in a proper position, giving him the drug in a proper dose and oxygen and monitoring of the patient. If you learn every medical emergency in this way, it probably becomes easier for you to remember during the exam. After this, the examiner may ask you any one of the three questions or he may ask you all three of them. It really depends on him. 
he may ask you now the drug which you have given fails to respond and the patient is showing the same symptoms as before what will you do or he may say that the patient is now getting better what will you do or he may say that the patient is deteriorating and showing bluish discoloration what will you do so either it is the same or it's improving or it's deteriorating now if it is the same then you will repeat the dose of salbutamol every 10 minutes and the dose remains same that is up to 10 puffs but this time you will call 999 because you're giving it for the second or the third time and still the patient is not getting okay and then the same follows oxygen 15 liters per minute monitoring vital signs now if the patient gets better good so you tell the examiner that I'll allow him to rest on the chair and I'll make detailed notes of the attack and I will reschedule his dental appointment it is very important to make proper notes i will then send the patient home with someone and i will refer him to his gp for asthma control so again this is very similar for all medical scenarios that you will allow him to rest you will send him home with an escort you will make detailed notes of the attack and send him to his gp for the control of the same now but if the patient deteriorates and shows bluish discoloration that means cyanosis so then you will say i would now reconsider my diagnosis because the features are changing so your now diagnosis changed to a life threatening asthma and when it's a life threatening asthma it is very similar to anaphylaxis so you will actually treat like an anaphylaxis you will call 999 you will get adrenaline from the emergency drug box kit again check name dose batch number expiry date and administer 1 is to 1000 intramuscularly 500 micrograms as it's an adult patient so again the dose is important and how did you determine the dose when you heard the age properly in the question adrenaline will be discussed in detail in anaphylaxis right now it's just we'll just discuss it as a part of life threatening asthma and then the similar thing you will monitor vital signs give oxygen and wait for the ambulance and prepare for cpr so when it's anaphylaxis it's 999 adrenaline with proper dosage and preparing for cpr now the life threatening asthma which we just studied there is a chance that the examiner asks you what are the clinical signs this question can be asked either before they actually go into the scenario or they may ask you while you're talking about the life threatening asthma and treatment or they may ask you after the scenario it really depends on what they want so here you have the three features they are underlined so you need to remember them so it's cyanosis and because it's cyanosis remember that now it's completely opposite so the respiratory rate is less less than 8 per minute the heart rate reduces as well less than 50 per minute if you remember in an asthmatic attack the respiratory rate and your heart rate had gone up but in a life threatening asthma it's completely opposite and one more addition is because the patient's heart rate and respiratory rate is low he is going to be exhausted confused and conscious level is going to decrease so if you understand it it's easy to learn coming to the medications so they may ask you that what is the salbutamol you are administering what drug it is so you need to characterize it by saying that it is a short acting beta 2 agonist or you can say it's a beta 2 adrenose receptor stimulant but it's better to remember an easy word when you're actually preparing for a viva and you can also say that it's a reliever inhaler but the best thing is to just stick to the first point and not add extra information which will draw more questions they may ask you that the every puff how much 
dose is actually given to the patient. So it's 100 micrograms per actuation or 100 micrograms per puff. Mode of action. How does the salbutamol work? It is divided into two parts. One is obviously on the airway because it is asthma. And what happens in asthma? Your bronchioles constrict. So what does the salbutamol do? It dilates them or relaxes them and helps the patient to breathe easily. The second thing it ha what it does is it stabilizes the mast cells. And these mast cells are actually responsible for secreting histamines, prostaglandins and leukotrienes. So when it stabilizes them, the secretion of these histamines reduce and hence the chances of the asthmatic attack happening also reduces. So one, it is a bronchodilator. Two, it is a mast cell stabilizer. They will also ask you the side effects of salbutamol, which again is easy to learn. Tremors of the extremities, palpitations, headache. Now, when you actually give a salbutamol, you actually attach the inhaler to this large volume spacer device, as you remember when we talked about in the management of asthmatic attack. So they may ask you, why are you going to put this volume spacer device? The answer is simple. The patient is having an asthmatic attack, so he's actually moving up and down. It's very difficult for you to actually put the inhaler in the patient because the patient's mouth is really not in one place. It's he is all going up and down. So to overcome this difficulty in coordinating the administration of the drug and the patient's inspiratory movement during the crisis, and also increasing the absorption of drug. So what does it do? It helps in the proper administration of the drug through this device and it also helps in increasing the absorption of the drug. Now which patients do you consider at a high risk asthmatic attack? So you will tell that the highest risk are the patients who are taking oral medications in addition to inhaled medications, who are using a nebulizer at home, who have used steroids in the last year, or who have been admitted in the hospital with asthma in the last year. So these are the four points which you again need to remember for the high risk asthma. So what will you do? You will take a proper medical history and analyze whether the patient is at high risk or not. So this is the end of part one and for a quick summary we studied the different scenarios of the asthmatic attack, what you need to hear when the examiner is talking about or giving you a question. How will you tell the diagnosis? What is the management? What are the three different situations which can happen after managing? Salbutamol drug, its mechanism of action, its disadvantages and the advantages of a large volume spacer device. The rest of the asthma medical emergency is in part two. So catch up for the rest of it. And if you like us, and if you want to join us, then you can contact us through any of the following links of the site, the phone number or the mail ID or join us on the FB and the WhatsApp group. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.